Budweiser Anaheim Doubleheader Motorsports Extravaganza. Hello, everybody. I'm Ken Brew, along with Mike Galloway. And tonight, Mike, we have come to the great outdoors for what should be a real entertaining evening. Well, it's going to be great, Ken. There's a lot of exciting action. Pulling's a little bit different tonight as they'll make two pulls and add the two pulls together, and the one pulling the greatest distance on both tracks will be the winner. Four-wheel drive and then wild supercharged two-wheel drive, and then we'll finish it up with side-by-side -side monster truck racing. We'll have a winner in that. We've also got tanks with truck-type bodies on them, and not only that, but Bigfoot will come out and make an incredible jump tonight. It's going to be a tremendous night of competition. Very exciting and a lot of things happening. You mean these poor devils have got to do twice the work to get one score? They're going to have to go down one track, then go around home plate, hook to a different sled, and go oh. down that track, add them together, and the winner is the one with the longest distance on both tracks. Tonight's telecast is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers and proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. For all you do, this Bud's for you. And first out of the shoot tonight will be the prosecutor, Dave Novello from Hollister, California, behind the wheel. It's a 59 Chevy body and 427, a horsepower under the hood. They've got a pair of these trucks. They've got the judge and the prosecutor. The prosecutor truck up first of 1959, as you mentioned. Good horsepower truck. It's going to take a lot of horsepower tonight. The track's hard. It's going to be real tough on the competitor. That and they have to make back-to-back -back pulls. It's a short cool down area before they go to the second sled. Wow, that is a hard track, isn't it? It's a good hard track. They're putting a lot of weight on the sled. The box is coming up very quickly. And that'll be the measurement that he'll write down in the record books. Now, he'll have a few moments to cool down, then he'll go to the second track, take the totals of the two pulls, and add them together, and that will be the distance they have tonight. So you're going to hear a lot bigger numbers as far as pulling distance is concerned than in the norm. All right, while they're waiting for the prosecutor to get hooked up, this is the wild hair. This is Dan Coelho behind the wheel. He's from Sherlock, California, and he's driving a 68 Dodge. 557 cubic inch all aluminum Keith Black Hemi. Wow. One of the big racing versions of the Chrysler Hemi. Dan does quite well, travels all over the United States with the United States Hot Rod Association and a strong competitor. Was runner up year before last for the national championship in the points race. Here comes Dan. Took the left side of the track and did very well with it. Very good hook for Dan Coelho. Very good hook. It's uh, it's going to be tough. I think as the night goes along, you're going to see people go further down the track. And there's his wild hair he's showing out the window. But I think the track will tear up a little bit. Moisture will come out of it, and the traction will be much better as the night goes along. This is the Popeye Express. As you can see, that's Mark Hargrove behind the wheel. He's from Turlock. And he is going to come down the left field foul line. 70 model Chevrolet truck with a big motor under the hood. Watch him grind it out. It's real tough over on that side. A lot of smoke coming up as Hartgrove tries the left side of the track. Well, the smoke probably was from the valve covers blowing thinner oil out onto to the headers and getting some smoke out of it. Don't think he hurt the engine. Didn't see a lot of it out of the exhaust side of the motor, so I don't think he hurt the motor too, that, too bad, but it also has a tendency, you get a lot of money invested in one of these motors, you see all that smoke, you have a tendency to kind of let up on it a little bit and mm -hmm. hold it in place for a moment. And let's see how he bites right off. Well, the track's good right off the starting line area. The traction's good, and it's going to be good all night long. Butterflies are wide open, and he's churning the tires. Working the track, trying to make the tires bite a little bit better, working it around... There you see the oil coming out, getting on the headers, and that's where all the smoke is coming from on the right bank. And here is the prosecutor, David Novella, behind the wheel, and this will be his second run. Remember, he came down left field foul pole to home plate. Here he is going the other way. Just airing it out. There's a good hook. They're going to measure all the way down. He's headed out. A very fine pull. Look out. This is a tough truck. Excellent pull. For David Novella, behind the wheel of the prosecutor, he did 130 feet and three inches at his first pull, and this one looks every bit of that. Let's look at the end of this pull, Mike, because this is where it got real interesting. Truck hooked up good. You see a lot of dirt coming off the front tires. The nose of it's biting in. 
right there look at the weight box almost all the way to the top that's where he puts the halt on it Dan Quello is getting ready for his second pull on wild hair he went 148 and four inches the first time and here is pull number two Dan's off and running and I mean hard watch him air it out he's gonna go the distance yeah Boy, Dan Coelho really did a great job on that one. He had it hooked up from the word go. He had a lot of ground speed, and the vehicle was running excellent. Before the night's over with, we're going to see somebody blow it right out that door. Now, let's look at the weight transfer machine in this one, Mike. Let's look. Here it is. Right there, it just comes over the rear tires. It goes from a rolling weight to a dragging weight. Now, no matter how fast he goes or how slow he goes, that'll be at the same place that every time you go down the track the box is topped out all the weight transferring over and putting friction down on the pan and the vehicle runs out of traction right at the end of the track just an excellent pull for the wild hair and dan quello kendall oil the exclusive choice for many of the nation's top truck and tractor pull competitors here it's because it's the same guy the truck that has set the standard mark tonight this is dan quello behind his second truck of the night this is the red rabbit 78 dodge Changed it over and converted it to a big 540 cubic inch all My aluminum. Goodness. Keith Black Hemi runs a trailer building business called Danco Trailers. Of course, he's been down the track, both tracks at one time, and there's a shot of that big injected Hemi sitting there. This truck, he actually purchased new, ran for Superstock for a while, and now campaigns it under the modified ranks. 500 what? 40 cubic inch aluminum Keith Black motor. This is a very tough truck. Boy, it looks it. It just looks mean sitting there. Dan can handle about any job you want to put on him, and let's see if he can handle it tonight. Now, here's a guy that's got to beat himself tonight. He'd like to. <laughs> Anytime he can put a little pad in there, it would help. Here we go. There's a fantastic shot, and Dan is going right on down and getting it deep, getting it real deep. That's it. That is impressive. I think that that's is. the furthest pull we've seen on that track tonight, and Dan Coelho really hooked up. We're going to look at this again. Good bite off the start, and obviously he knew this surface. Well, Dan had it dialed in, went to the right-hand side. He didn't run the right-hand side on that first pull, and he's one of the first competitors down that side of the track. The machine has hooked up extremely well. Got a good amount of distance on it, good traction all the way around, an excellent pull for Dan Coelho. Dan knows his business. The Anaheim doubleheader extravaganza in pull number two for the running bear. This is Dan Dury. Another one out of that mythical city of Turlock. 79 Chevy, 468 under the hood. 138 feet, 11 and a quarter inches was his first pull. He'll have to put one down past the full pull mark. He needs to put about uh, 10 foot, or oh, about a 204 and seven would put him in the lead just looking at it. And that's just a little bit past the finish line. Now, they're going to let them pull the sled on this track as far as they can. They will measure past the finish line area on this track. Easing into it, a good pass start, and he's still got a little bounce going on. Took the passing lane and a little flare there at the end. And the running bear will wait for them to add it up. That truck's too young to smoke. We know this truck bounces right off of the starting line, but when that happens, just a little further down the track, you're going to notice the bounce comes out of it. He actually drives the bounce out of it, still getting some very good distances. He would probably even be further down the track if the bounce wasn't right there on the starting line, but an excellent hook on the part of running bear. Combined, he has to be 319 and 4 inches. All right, next up, Jim Bishop. Apple Valley, California. This is the good vibrations. Jim runs a little motor, 468 cubic inches, little in this sport, and it runs on gasoline. Just the second year he and his wife picked him, Cam Lanning the truck. And here again, having a little bit of problems with the tires, keeping them glued to the ground, bouncing around a little bit, and that's going to take the footages off the good vibrations. Good vibrations, we're gonna see it again, kind of like from the crowd's point of view here, sitting down in the expensive seats. Immediately, the little bounce off the front end, as it gets worse as it goes along. The, 
unlike the running bear truck, the bounce didn't come out of it. You see, he's still up and down motion, and that's really hurting the traction on it, really cutting down on the forward momentum. Now I'm Ken Brew with Mike Galloway. Stay tuned because we'll have more here from Anaheim in just a moment. Here comes the borrowed time. First pull for him tonight. Supercharged Chevrolet in a 1942 Ford. 18 more, 16 one tires. Biggest one's allowed. He's coming to charge it. Watch out. Got the front end just about right. Just about right on the balance of it. Hey, takes it down deep. That was a great one, Jim. Oh, superb pull tonight. For borrowed time, Rick Garrett out of Riverside, California. Watch him roll just a little ways. The tires light up right there. He's wide open, and it comes charging. A little puff out of it. He's running good. Now, the front end's coming up, and that's good. He's right there on the end. He's really putting the power down, and it's an outstanding pull. Weight box all the way to the top. And I'll tell you what, an outstanding job for that 42 Ford with the blown Chevrolet. That's a good run, and it's going to be a tough one to beat. Of course, something new tonight for us are the superchargers, and they just don't happen. They have to be constructed and worked on constantly, and one of the experts in that field is Larry Hall, and Mike had a chance to chat with him tonight. We're going to see a lot of supercharged vehicles in competition tonight, and to fully understand a supercharger a little bit better, what a better person to do it than Larry Hall with Blower Drive Service. And Larry, exactly what does a supercharger do? Well, Mike, a supercharger forces the air down into the motor, giving it the maximum amount of air-fuel mixture into the cylinder to give it the maximum amount of horsepower that engine can possibly produce. Now, with a supercharger, air coming in the top, does it go through a set of vanes, rotors? It goes through a roots-type blower system, which falls through rotors. It's forcibly forced down into the motor with air pressure and pressurizes the inside of the motor. How do you drive the blower? What makes it go around? Okay, a blower is driven off the crankshaft onto a three-inch belt, which turns the blower, which takes approximately 25 horsepower to turn a blower. It's going to be real tough tonight. When you see the supercharged vehicles, you'll know the vehicles because they're a lot louder, and they build a lot of horsepower. They're very exciting. There's a lot of vehicles here tonight with them on the vehicles, and they're going to be something to watch. And next up is Dennis Marson again, who uh, did not have a whole lot of success in Deadly Instigator, now tries his luck with Black Attack. Again, from Turlock, California, Dennis Marson. Well, this is his original truck. Now, the, the first truck he ran that had problems when he, the motor fluttered and went down on him is a brand new truck. This is an older model truck. It's got the supercharged Jeep Black Hemi in it. Watch him come to life. He's still not on it all the way. Watch the three dots. Watch the three dots. They've gone out of sight, and he's wide open right now. He's got the front end up, and it's a good pull. This is going to be one of the better ones run in on this one did a lot better than the black uh, than the uh, deadly instigator and a good pull for that man Dennis Marson that was an excellent pull he really had a good hook all the way around the balance is very important on these vehicles now Mike here's a dad that came prepared tonight he knew it was gonna be loud he knew he's gonna have little ones with him they're gonna have uh, real sensitive ears and old dad was thinking he brought a couple of headsets just to make sure this noise pollution doesn't uh, affect little eardrums well he truly did dad thought ahead he brought in those shooter muffs and it protects them they've got some warm clothing on and they're here to enjoy the monster trucks the pulling just a, a very exciting night for these young people there is the oil patch puller terry alvers from ventura california it's a 69 chevy and a 575 Aries. And I'm told it's only the, it's the only uh, two-rail drive Aries on the West Coast right now. Boy, that's a tough engine. Now, this Aries engine is the block on it is basically a Chevrolet design block. Has hemispherical heads, much like a Chrysler on it. The design on it's excellent, much more strength than the, the webbing underneath it. It's a good, strong motor. It's all aluminum. He will have all the horsepower he should need tonight. As you see, the big blower setting up on top with a fuel injection system there and the blower drive set up. He's going to turn loose. Needs to go past 192.11 to take the lead. Here we go. He was fighting that one at the end, wasn't he? That was just unbelievable. There's a man that has just put an exceptional drive on it. The truck actually drifted from a vantage point over the white line, but did not touch down. Came back around and settled on the track. Just a super, super job. Let's look at the oil look. patch puller, too. I want to see this again because it was a heck of a start and a finish that was equal to it. Eases into the motor, but watch him. He's going towards the left-hand side of the track. Pulling hard, he cuts the tires, but that's not doing him any good. They're not touching down. 
just skims it right there at the edge. It's going to be real close. He yes, may have gone to the lead. And he loves his truck. No doubt about that. He even loves it more right now. There's a good shot of the 18-4, 16-1 tires on the back of it. Now, these tires are built especially for this class by Dick Sepak. Yep. And, but they have cut the tires yeah. especially for this. Now, they come with lugs on them, much like a tractor tire. But hours and hours and hours of work was done in smoothing the tires and cutting this groove that you see on them there. It not only helps the traction, but it lightens the vehicle up. It takes several hundred pounds off of it to lighten it up. So it really, you know, it makes a lot of difference in it. Well, there's Mr. and Mrs. Tom Seepeck, the president of Dick Seepeck Incorporated, and enjoying the competition tonight. Of course, they're the makers of the giant puller tires. You can't win without them. We're back at Anaheim Stadium, where tonight we're taking a real good look at the Anaheim Doubleheader Motorsports Extravaganza. Over to track number one now as we get ready to go with that 1942. Mm -mm. Borrowed time. Here he goes. Rick Garrett. Rick's got the balance right. It's going to be a good pass for him. Oh, look at that. Had the front end up. He was drifting to the outside, and he backed out of the throttle just a little bit too quick. And when it did, when it landed, it sheared the right front tire off. Broken axle? It's the, uh, it's actually the spindle. The spindle. That holds the tire on the, or the wheel on the axle, and it sheared it off. Usually it shears them off right there where they bolt up to the axle itself. There's a, a pit lady. Well, they'll have something to work on when they get borrowed time back to the garage. Well, fortunately, it didn't happen on the first pull. It happens on the second pull, so he'll still have some footages tonight. We're getting ready to go with uh, his second pull of the night. Is temporary insanity. This is John Shipman. Looks like John doesn't have any tires at all yeah, on the front of this one. I was going to say, those are the smallest tires I've ever seen. But this is a fiberglass funny car, and he's going to the, the smaller type tires that you're seeing a lot on the dragsters at the drag strip. Don't look like they're there, but they're really dialed in underneath. Motor making some noise. He's making some power. Headed hard to the left-hand side. He tries to keep it up. Beautiful job. Great pull. You know, it's interesting. It seems like drivers that are working the left side of that second track uh, are having a drifting problem to the outside. It may be a rut or something down there. Well, let's watch him. Yep. He stages intentionally on the right-hand side to try to keep that from happening. But the front end comes up. He's got it hard in a drift. And right there, he backs just a little bit. A beautiful job. He's going to be down close to the finish line. An outstanding job for temporary insanity. Black Attack back for its second pull here in the Super Modified classification. Black Attack with 192 and 11 inches in its first pull. That was down track number two. This is track number one. Black Attack, Dennis Marson in the saddle. Big blown Hemi out of the hood. He did do it. Running What a job. What a job for the Black Attack. Did you see that smoke coming out from the belly as it went up in the air? Beautiful job. The truck had the balance front end a little bit high in the air, but I'll tell you this much, he really had it cooking as he went out the gate. Outstanding job. Second pull of the night for Spuds, John Shipman from Turlock. This is truly a beautiful truck. 1988 GMC, and it's it, it just a beautiful truck. He's got good ground speed on it. Balance on this truck. Look at the balance. Very good. Front end's not coming up until right there at the end of the drive. Beautiful, Beautiful. pass. That's the first thing I noticed is the front end didn't rise early like it had in some other pulls. Just great job. Temporary insanity. This is John Shipman's second pull of the night. 87, uh, nice body, 87 body, 496 GMC motor in that car. Lowers the boom on it, the tire speeds up. This is the one that looks like it doesn't have front tires. He's got it going good. Got it going good. good Ran pull. out of traction. It's a good pull. Good he had pull. the blower really turned up on it. It was an excellent run for him. We're going to take a look at a replay as well. Beautiful fiberglass Oldsmobile-type body on this car. And watch him come to life. 
the tires are got good speed on him now the front end picks up a little bit he's got a good pass going but he's going to run out of traction right there the weight box up on top of him and he runs out of traction and sets it on the ground this is Alan Gaines out of Georgetown, Kentucky, with the Orange Blossom Special, a little 1937 Chevrolet. Watch him. He's not hooked to the sled. He's just going to try it out. See if it's working for him. Yeah, it's ripe. It's ready. Alan is one of the originators of the two-wheel drives. This little 37 Chevrolet really builds the horsepower. Now, he's running exhibition. Alan's been doing this for a long time. He's just here tonight wants to show it how it works and this guy does a great job watch him when he hooks it to the sled it will be all the way down the track the front end will be as high in the air as you could possibly get one of them on his way out here this week alan had an accident in his hauler truck destroyed that had to send back to kentucky to get another tractor to come out and pull his trailer with his pull trucks on it now watch it he's just about ready to go he's got the running lights on there's the whistle for the orange blossom special it's all aboard time as we get ready to ride with the man out of georgetown kentucky the front end will go in the air almost immediately it's up now and watch it go alan james is on his way out over to the side he's exhibition and he just keeps on pulling oh. watch him set it down he could set it down so easy that comes from years of experience the dick c-pec giant puller tires on the back of it doing an outstanding job for alan Gaines out of georgetown kentucky so here's how the super modified winds up tonight black attack dennis marson walks away with it but a place at a show for uh, John Shipman, Spuds and Temporary Insanity finish two and three. Two monster trucks going at it, but four, Mike. It's going to be a great battle of the monster trucks, and, it's, and this is just starting the race. Todd Blazer in the blue and red Hawaiian punch over on the far side. On the close side is Gary Sad uh, in the Skull Bandit truck. Both of these trucks, strangely enough, run out of the same stable. They both come out of Golden State pickup parts stable. They have three monster trucks that are on hand tonight, and it's going to be very tough competition. The little school bandit truck you're looking right straight in the face of, it's quick, it's short, it's agile. The longer truck, supercharged motor, and it will be high horsepower on the Hawaiian punch truck. Well, these, guys, these guys aren't into rehabilitation, are they? They are definitely <laughs> not that. There's a good shot of Todd Blazer, and uh, that's the supercharged motor. Big horsepower on that truck. So let's see what happens. Is it going to be the short, agile truck or the big, long truck with the big, supercharged horsepower? It's a battle of the monster trucks. They've got a big course ahead of them. It's side-to-side -side competition until we come out with a winner. Here we go. Flag is out. Side-by-side, -side, looks like it's, they are very close. They're very close, and they've got problems. Both of them are in a little bit of trouble. But the Bandit, the Bandit takes the lead. The Bandit takes the lead. The Hawaiian punch truck is in trouble. The Bandit is out of the lead. He's headed down across the back. What would be center field for his second set of cars? Gary is doing a great job. He's easing around, trying to save some time. Has some problems on the back set of cars. Now they've got to race back to home plate. They're going to race back to home plate. Right now, it's anyone's battle. Todd is having problems. Look at that Hawaiian punch truck is really in a bind over on the back straightaway. This one's going to go to the Skull Bandit truck if nothing happens. Now, this truck is really going to have to take its time. Gary knows he's got a lead, but Todd is hung up over on the back straightaway. It looks like it's going to be the Bandit, and the Bandit, worse for wear. Uh-oh, he has, looks like the steering. Looks like he may have broken the steering on that truck. He's got rear wheel steering only. He hasn't finished the course no, yet, he has Ken. not. He has not. So he may have to turn around and back this thing home, huh? Well, he's going to have to drop out of the competition because broke the steering on the front end. They're going to give it to him. He's going to have to have some, just a short time to try to repair that truck and get ready to go again. Wow. Well, here comes round two, and the boss is Jim Reese, uh, the toy, which I guess is probably the biggest uh, contradiction in here tonight. That is no toy, but that is one big monster truck with Joe Rake behind the wheel. Joe Rake, the toy, 
going up against the boss. Now what in the heck is going on there in the toy? Joe's out winding the toy up. He, oh, my he, goodness. He wants to get all the horsepower he can out of the toy, so he'll wind it up, get him a little, get him a little speed going. This is going to be a good race. Here again, we've got a real light truck, very maneuverable, the toy. But over in the other side, the boss, Jim Reese, here is one of the hardest charging drivers on the monster truck circuit. Jim Reese, the AMPM boss, his 1972 Chevrolet, watch him. He is one tough driver. He will hammer all the way on the truck. I'd look for the boss to really jump out of the lead. He'll, he's quick on start. He knows how to handle the truck. The truck's been very successful. Let's see if he does it. It's the toy and the boss in round two of monster truck competition. Here we go. Reese out to a quick lead. Reese first one up on a car. He gets a lot of air. So does the toy. The toy in problem, having real problem over on the first set of cars. Reese makes the turn. He's in good shape. Reese will go to the far set of cars now. He sees he's got a lead. You know, he's letting up on it. He's taking his time. He knows that he can make this one. He can very possibly right, go into the, the next the round. The toy is up. They're going to have to he give the win to the boss. Oh, yeah. The boss cannot come back around. The, the toy is still sitting on the set of cars that needs to jump now. He wouldn't crush the toy, would he? <laughs> he wouldn't guts the toy <laughs> if the toy doesn't move in a very short while. That's right. They better get out there and wind the toy back up again. But it's the boss's race. Don't mess with the boss. Well, you look at the front of the toy, the drive shaft. There he is underneath it, and the drive shaft is in his left hand. That's the front drive shaft, and he sheared that off. He pulled it out when he went in, and uh, no front drive, lots of problems for yeah. the toy. Amen. Let's take a look and see where the toy got into trouble, Mike. Leaves good, having a little bit of problem controlling the truck right off the starting line. Now watch when he hits this set of cars. Right there is where he, the problems arise for him and it may happen when he lands and there it is yep, yep. when he lands the front drive shaft drops out of it and that's all of it for the toy not supposed to be flopping around like that is it now i'm ken brew with mike galloway stay tuned because we'll have more here from anaheim in just a moment Paul in the barbarian he will be on the far side of your picture in the white van and so high two will come down the first base line well, the Soul High 2, a very, very well, pretty truck out of Arizona. But you've got to watch the, the little Barbarian. 43-inch tires on it. This is a brand-new truck, only the second time it's been out in competition. You've got to watch that truck. I know the driver of it. Bruce is super tough. He knows how to handle it. He's been driving for quite some time. He, he has no fear. He'll hammer the truck, and he'll go for everything it's worth. It'll go or blow, as they would say, but the Barbarian van up against one called So High. There's the Barbarian right there, but you know, the So High, too, it, look, it, it, it seems to be sitting up, purchased higher, perhaps, than the other trucks that we've seen, is it? It is, and it has a, a, a bigger set of tires on it. These are what they call 74s. These are the biggest set of tires in monster truck racing at the current time. They're heavier tires. Now, Bruce runs a real light truck. The little Barbarian van, it's light, it's agile, it gets around quick. There's the little shot of the 43s. This is what the tires were when we originally started monster trucks. These were considered monster tires. And then the tires went up and up and up. And Bruce still makes very successful runs with the little tires on the van. He's tough. He's real tough. He's not only good running truck, but he's a very good driver. There's the big 77. Here we go. He's going to have to hurry because So High is out on top. So High doing a great job. So High is really taking this one. This could be a big upset. The Barbarian hits the cars. He didn't have enough speed to get up on top of them. Does it again. He's still climbing to get up. He barely makes it up. Now he's got a lot of time to make up. But Bruce Gunn is going to try it. He's going to try to go for it. There is the one called so high. He's over the last set of cars. Look at this. Look at this, Bruce. Oh, Bruce hit them like a brick wall. He just ran up and went for everything he was worth. I don't think the front tires are actually climbing on this. No. Look at that. He's wiped the steering out of it. He's wiped it completely out. Here it is. Oh, look how high. Look how high. That 
beautiful truck is getting. He's got to get down off the cars. He's got to cross that finish line. He may be the first successful man. He is. He's the first one to cross the finish line tonight in competition. No contest. So high, too. The first to cross the finish line tonight. Let's take a look and see where Barbarian really got into a heap of trouble, and it's right here. Well, he's trying to make up some precious time, and he does it. Bruce does a great job. He handles the truck well. He's making up some precious time, and watch this. Uh-oh, it won't go. He backs up. He's going to back up just a little bit and try it again. He's got to get got to get a little more speed, and the tires need to get a hold and climb, and what's happening is the tires aren't climbing. But at that time, well, the man that had really done it all was so high, too. All right, right now it's going to be the Skull Bandit, Gary Saban behind the wheel, and the boss, Jim Reese. Jim, we noticed maybe having a little trouble up front, but uh, we'll see if it holds up. Skull Bandit, of course, uh, winning in the first heat, so now they go in this next elimination series. Good shot of the Skull Bandit. Well, he had some problems earlier, and they've been over in the pit area fixing the steering, right? Front steering on the truck, so he's ready to go. The boss is setting po poised, and this will be a very good race. These guys are very good friends, spend a lot of time together. But that's all over with. That's history. It's time to go racing. Well, let me ask you this. These uh, these 57 Buicks are pretty well crushed down at this point. Does that make it a faster race now around the track? Makes it a much quicker course. A much quicker course. They, the, the cars have just... You know, they're lower. You can hit them harder. You can run harder. There's a shot of the big block Chevrolet. Look at all the shocks underneath the yeah. boss. They need it. You can tell that for the simple reason that they hit these cars with such speed and such force. 14,000 pounds of monster truck, both of them poised on go. Both of them carbureted big blocks. You don't get a set of shocks for these things for like 14.95 a pair, do you? There's no way. Side by side, the boss of the Skull Bandit, and it's showtime. They're off. Who's going to be to the first one out? It looks like Skull Bandit is out of the lead. Skull Bandit has got a little bit of a lead over the boss. Jim Reese, he can make up a lot of time. But right now, look out. The Bandit. The Bandit has got the lead. The Bandit is in the lead. He hits the cars first. He's flying. He's flying. Look at Reese. He's just cleared him. Reese has made up precious time. Reese has made up unbelievable time. It's going to be a showdown at the finish line. It's going to be a showdown. Reese cleared all the cars. Reese is all over it. He wins it. He wins it. The boss pulls it out. The boss pulls it out. Jim Reese pulls it out. He actually cleared the entire pack of cars out in center field. I mean, just on the fly. Watch him. He clears the cars, all of them, and then some. Now there, look at the landing, front end up in the air. All he can do is hold on. It's still bouncing. That's the far set of cars out in center field. Now he makes the turn. He lines up and he does it on the run. Watch him. Hammer down, hits the cars. Never touches them again. He could have probably cleared five more. Oh, it almost went over. Settles back down and he's across the finish line for a great big win for the AMPM boss. Well, they're rolling out the military now. This is the Gator with George Cole behind the wheel against the Virginia Beach Beast. William Powers driving that one. The Gator's an interesting truck. Uh, it's a 77 Chevy, but uh, it's got a little bit of camouflage on it, too. Well, it does definitely has that. It is a military tank driveline under it. has a, a big 454 cubic inch motor setting in the back of it, as does the Virginia Beach Beast. Now, the winner of this one will go up against the winner in the rubber tired monster truck race. Now, what would these be used for, Mike? Just quick little, you know, uh, jaunts out to the 7-Eleven for some milk late at night? Uh, either out to the 7-Eleven or through the 7-Eleven. Got you. This is going to be a great race. These guys with the tank really don't let up. They go wide open from the time they leave. They steer with individual sticks, much like the heavy equipment, Lock the tracks up and turn. They'll run about 40 miles an hour on the ground, and they're really exciting. You don't have to worry about a flat either. No, I wouldn't think. Tank trucks side by side. They're fast, they're agile, they get around quick, and it's going to be a really tough competition. I would think that they would probably, with that kind of traction, go over the uh, 
the cars a little bit easier than some of those big uh, rubber tire cars. They will, and they'll destroy the cars. They weigh about 40,000 pounds a piece. Watch out. Virginia beats Peace. Now they're both out. They start slow, but they go from there. Watch this. Never let up. The Gator. The Gator over the top. It is close. The beat is right beside it. Now they make the turn. This is very critical because they're side by side. Look at them. The race is wide open. They're not going to let up. I believe the Beast has got a little bit of a lead. The Gator is really coming on strong. The winner is going to be right here at home plate as they make the turn and head for the shoot. Who's it going to be? They're side by side. It's the Beast. The Beast is in the lead. The Beast loses control. The Beast loses control. And let's wait on a winner. Whoa! Oh, my goodness. And they meet for a friendly visitation on the finish line. The crowd loves it. And what a finish. Oh. The beast is wide open. He is really flying. Look at the parts come off the cars. Now, he loses control. He gets it sideways. He brings it back around. And when he does that, he's back on the throttle all the way. At that time, about that time, here comes the Gator. They're both there at the same place, same time, and it's, hello. They gave it to the Gator. The Gator. The Gator takes that one. <laughs> now, do you fill out insurance forms on yeah, this? Yeah, I think you better. Well, here he is, the granddaddy, the uh, grand poobah of uh, monster trucks, Bigfoot, Jim Kramer in the saddle tonight. This is a brand new Bigfoot truck. It's built to do something that, as of this time, no one has done. Jim Kramer is not going to crush cars. He's going to try to fly over them. He's got to hit the ramps at about 40 to 43 miles an hour. And what he will do, he'll come out, look at things, he'll crush the cars, kind of, kind of get the feel of it. <laughs> just a little warm-up. Oh, this is just a warm-up. I mean, yeah. it's, this is a walk in the park for the foot. But when he comes back around after this crush, he will be ready to go. Oh, my goodness. Looks like about 14 cars. He's going to try to jump 10. He'd like to go to 12. He'll make two attempts at it. He's looking at the landing spot on it. You can imagine seven Brand new truck. Now, tell me about it. Is it different than the other Bigfoots? It's the roll cage has been reinforced on the inside. There's a lot more driver safety. You see a lot more braces going across the inside of the truck. The truck's a little lighter. He's turning for it. He's looking at it right now. He'll probably be maybe attack and come off a little bit. He'll back up and get a run. He's got to run about 43 miles an hour. Now, what he's done, he's got some room to shut down. The landing is ever so critical. I think Jim maybe want to just get the cars down a little bit more. A couple of them he didn't. A couple of them he didn't destroy yeah. enough on the first time. He's got a good landing surface land. Kind of like a rolling trash compactor, huh? It truly is. I tell you what, the man is, is unbelievable. He's incredible as far as the way this truck works. Now, we talk about jumping 14 cars or jumping 10 cars, 12 cars, whatever the number is. It was set up earlier that the number of cars to be jumped will be measured by the front tires, not the rear tires. So it's where the front tires land. So it'll, it will actually clear more cars than it looked like. It's where the front tires land is what is considered the jump distance. But of course, the driver of Bigfoot is just as much an attraction as the, the truck itself. And our Mike Galloway had a chance to meet Jim Cramer up close and personal. I'm with Jim Cramer, and tonight Jim Cramer is driving the Bigfoot truck. And Jim, we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of the competition, it's a jump. That's correct. Uh, we're coming out here attempting to jump 12 cars. You can see the cars there behind me. Uh, the problem is the last car is right in line with the left field foul pole. And if I don't get stopped in time, I might end up on the pole. But Jim, is it tougher jumping the cars than it is running the competition? Is it harder on you or is it harder on the equipment? It's a terrific impact. In order to achieve the distance I need, I'm having to hit the cars 40 to 42 miles an hour. The initial impact is very bad. Of course, coming down is not as bad, I think, as some of the competition events coming down because you do land on a nice uh, bed of cars. Sometimes in the competition, you have to clear the cars to stay competitive. Well, Jim Kramer is going to go for 12 tonight. We'll be waiting to see what he does. 
first time ever this has been attempted. Jim Kramer, St. Louis, at the wheel. I think he can do it. Watch him. Hanging it out a little bit. He'll get into it. That was a good jump. He was just kind of testing the water. I think when he comes back around this time, you know, I don't think he had that 40 mile an hour speed that time. I don't think you can practice this, can you? You kind of just go out there and do it. You just have to do it. Now they're, they're looking at him. They're going to talk to him. The guys on the ground have a good view that Jim doesn't have. Everything looks all right. Drive lane line seems to be in good shape. This is it. Thumbs up from Kramer. He's going for it. He's got it wide open. Hang it out. Hang it out. Kramer Hayes, look at that. Oh, over it. Two bounces and off. Unbelievable. On the binders, brings it to a stop. The truck's in good shape. Outstanding jump for Jim Kramer. All right, we're going to look at this again from the low angle. This is what transpired. Jim Cramer, Bigfoot, making the leap. 43 miles an hour. Watch him get airborne. This is a 12,000-pound truck, and he... Oh! <laughs> to and off. I'm telling you, the man has just got to be made of iron. Can you imagine the beating that he's taking inside that truck when it's landing, throwing him all around? As usual, Bigfoot... What can you say? Steals the show. This has been the Ford Budweiser Anaheim Doubleheader Motor Sports Extravaganza. Tonight's telecast has been brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers and proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. For all you do, this Bud's for you. This has been a presentation of Bud Sports through the facilities of ESPN.